Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. And what I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my job properly you should be watching me in black and white right now. It's like, don't worry, it, it becomes colour later on. It, it's like the Wizard of Oz without the dropping the house on the witch to get a pair of shoes. It's a long way to go for a pair of shoes. Anyway, uh, today's film, as you would have seen from the thumbnail, the title and if you've read any of it, the description, is reviewing the Ofra Signature Palette in... Actually, no, I'm not going to tell you which one it is, because then you'll know what colour my eyes are. So it's one of the Ofra Signature Palettes. And I'm going to test out some of these Pat McGrath shimmers. Is she worth the extra? There's only one way to find out. Sammy the Sloth Store knows what to do. It's time to grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. <laughs> Having real problems with um, tripod today. But I don't know why. And I'm in too much pain to stand there and try and fiddle with it. So, if I'm slightly lopsided, I apologise. Um, I would have shown you these two in the intro. The Signature Palette from Ofra and the Eye Ecstasy Subversive Palette from Pat McGrath. So, if you don't know what they look like, this is the Ofra one. So it's got four purple toned mattes, a highlighty type shade, and I think that is a highlighter in the middle. It's Neptune, which I'm pretty sure it, it's got the same pattern on it that their highlighters have. And because everyone goes on and on and on about how wonderful Pat McGrath is, and I really like the look of the Divine Rose, I think it's the second one that I like best, but I like them both. But everyone raves about her shimmer formula. And I saw this on Depop, which is just five of her coloured shimmers. She also did one with more neutral shimmers, like a bronze and a gold and a silver and a, you know, and a copper. So I thought I would combine the mattes from this with one, maybe two of these, because then I can see if Pat McGrath is really as good as people say, because if this is no better than any of my other shimmers, I don't need to break my neck anymore wishing I could afford a Pat McGrath palette. This worked for me with the Natasha Denona when I tried uh, the love palette, I realised, yeah, it's okay, but I can draw home about. Definitely not worth the inflated prices, so that's great. I don't need to worry about that anymore. Um, so let's see if I can do the same with Pat McGrath with this one. Or is it going to backfire on me and I'm going to fall head over heels in love with it and want her palettes even more? Who knows? No, my luck. <laughs> right, this is still a teaching channel. By virtue of that um, 
I do zoom in very close so it's just my eyes on screen. That said, if your eyesight's not what it cracked up to be and you're watching me on a mobile, you can still see what the heck I'm doing, which uh, I always find important. Yeah, wow, being able to see what you're doing. What a novel concept. And um, I'm also going to go at a speed that beginners can keep up with me. This is partly because of my chronic pain, but also because when I was first learning, there aren't really any channels that go at a speed that beginners can keep up with. And where they cut the blending out, in some cases, you don't know how long they've been blending for to get it to look that good. Whereas with me, you see, if it's a difficult to blend shadow, you will see that it's a difficult to blend shadow. I hide nothing. So I'm just double checking that the brush I'm about to use is definitely clean by cleaning it on a washcloth. Um, one of the things that I have noticed as well is that a lot of people with deep set eyes like myself say, oh, I've got hooded lids. Although the way that eyeshadow wears on hooded and deep set eyes is very similar, the actual shape of the eye is different and the best application methods are different. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a minute. It will just be my eyes on screen. Um, and I'll talk you through how to work out which eye shape you have and what method you need to use to get the most longevity and the best finish for your eyes. Right, once that clip is done, I will be back at the other end of it to start applying coloured pigments to my eyelids. Here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. 
it's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to start off with this Real Techniques 305 brush. It's basically just a fluffy brush. Um, whatever the width of the head of the brush, that's how far out it will blend the colour. So if you've got a smaller eye, start with a slightly smaller brush. Hockey dockily. Um, I wish they'd put the names on the front instead of on the back. I'm sort of flip it up. I, mean, let's have a, I haven't thrown the box away yet, so I can actually cheat today and just look at the box. Right. So I'm going to start off with Stella, which is the lightest of the three mattes. Fair amount of kick up in the pan, but that's fine because I'll just pick that back up when I go in to build up. Now I'm going to be using the uh, Viennese Waltz blend as usual, which basically is natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back out again. The reason I do this is twofold. One, I'm 46 years old. Two. I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. But I know slim teenagers that have the same issue. And by doing it this way, instead of just relying on the windshield wiper, you're less likely to get those telltale tiger stripes or barcoding effect where your lid is folded over on itself. So I'm going to start sort of halfway between my natural crease and my brow. I always start on the outer edge because if you do deposit too much pigment it's much easier to deal with it when your nose isn't in the way. So I'm just going to gently build this colour up as I come across. Again, fleckle at the nose and reverse the direction to come back out again. I've got um, four O for highlights. I've got the uh, the two that Nikki tutorials. Actually, I've got the three that Nikki tutorials did. I've got the glazed donut from her original um, collab, and then I've got uh, cloud number nine and space baby, and I've also got pillow talk. But I've yet to try their eyeshadows. But so far, this is blending quite nicely. Without too much trouble at all. Yeah, that's built up quite well actually. I 
Opal's highlights are the kind that you, you don't want to use if you're a um, if you're a shrinking violet basically because they glow to the gods and dazzle them so they can't see what you're up to. I mean, the first time I used glazed donut I was absolutely stunned. Up until that point my go-to white highlighter had been Jeffrey's Ice Cold. Yeah, I don't ever touch it now. If I want a white highlighter I tend to go for glazed donut. Right. I like to relax my brows and look and compare how the eye looks because um, especially with fibro, I mean your eyes are not symmetrical anyway but especially with fibro I can get random lid swelling so although I've done the same shape I can have two completely different shaped finishes and if you've already blended other colours on top you can sit there and look at it and think mm, something's not right but I can't work out what it is whereas if you do each colour one at a time you have the option to compare and if necessary adjust so it can mean that you do different shapes both sides to get them to look the same when your eyes are relaxed <clears throat> That's really nice. Very, very soft blend as well. I'm just going to take any excess colour off and just buff that top edge just so it's a little bit softer. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't, well then I sincerely hope that tomorrow's is better for you. And if you're at the start of your day, well I hope it is as fabulous as you are. like that. This is the kind of shadow that if I was in a rush I'd use as a one and done. I'd just put this on my mobile lid and kind of fade it upwards and then just pop a little bit of highlighter in the middle and be done, you know. Really pretty shade. But it's very pink compared to the shade it is in the palette. So I'm going to go into the mid-toned one, this one, which is da -da 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 -da, Eclipse. And I'm going to do exactly the same movement, just Lower down, basically. And just build the colour up as we go across. I do struggle here and here, both sides, with uh, dry patches on my eyes. So I do sometimes struggle when applying eyeshadows there, that they can sometimes go a bit patchy. And just take a little bit of additional blend, you know. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for some decent daylight. I did this yesterday and it just it never brightened up at all, all day. 
I mean, literally, I needed lights on all day. And when I film, I rely on natural daylight. And then I just have two little LED strip lights behind the camera. Because I like to film in natural light as much as possible so that things are true to colour. You know, I don't want to use all these huge great soft boxes and ring lights and because they they blur things, they make things look a lot better than they actually do in real life. You know, I mean Cakey foundation can look perfectly smooth when you've got soft boxes and ring lights and stuff. I know from when I've taken photographs of myself when my mate Sophie was doing my nails for me. Um, and she had soft boxes because she used to film. And um, I used to look so much better in photos that I'd taken up at hers than I ever did at mine. And the only thing different was the soft box. Now with this side I struggle a lot because this is the one that was where I'm blinding it. It was pulled around an awful lot when I was a kid at the ophthalmic hospital before I went blind trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly. Um, so I've got super super deep creasing just over here as you can see and even the even the Viennese Waltz blend doesn't always help with Getting it seamless, as John McLean would say. Has he stopped uploading tutorials or something? I haven't seen a film from him for ages. I used to like watching his films. I'm getting birds up under the eaves again. You can hear baby birds twittering. Oh well. I had house sparrows the other year, that was lovely. Right, I'm going to go into the deepest shade now, which is Orion, which is this one here. Now, the previous two shades are very pink or red based. This one is very blue based. Blues are very difficult to create. This could make or break this look. Keep your fingers crossed for me. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm literally just going to put it on the outer edge here and on the edge of my mobile lid. So I'm just going to... So I've used the same brush all the way through. Just... Blend. Can't see a damn thing at the moment. Time. 
Normally for this bit I go into a smaller brush, but I wanted more of a, a diffused effect. Now, in my mirror, that looks perfect. But on camera, it's looking patchy around here. This is the problem of filming in 1080. Things that look absolutely fine in real life look less so and I'm literally just dragging the very tip of the bristles across because I just want to really faintly deepen that I want the majority of the depth to be on that outer corner there I will put photos up as I always do on Instagram after this film has gone live and then you'll be able to see that this isn't actually um, patchy, but it's blended. Just in case you were uh, doubting me. Watching Peter Mon this morning. Hubby and I tend to watch him when we're having breakfast. Because he makes us both laugh in the morning and it sends Hubby off to work in a good mood. Without having to deal with the general public and idiots all day. And uh, this morning he was doing a bit of a mini rant about his haters that come on and the same sort of 14 to 20 people come on and watch an hour of his vlogs in the evening and then press dislike and he was like he was really taking the mickey out of them if I can I'll try and download the clip and I'll pop it in um, at the end of the film Just so that you can see what he said. Hopefully he won't copyright me for it. Not that I'm monetized anyway, so okay. Apart from the fact they look patchy when they're not. That's actually blended out quite nicely. So now the big question is, how many colours do I want to put across my lid? The answer is, I haven't decided yet. <coughs> I think what I might do is start with one, and depending on how much I like it, I might put a second one on. Or I might not. Right, I have two tiny little flat brushes here. Can you see? I'm going to use this one right in the inner corner, and then this one a little bit further out. Now, with this eye, because of all this deep creasing here, I do have to stretch the lid out when I'm putting something on the mobile lid. If I don't, all that happens is that it collects loosely in those creases and ends up falling into my eye through the day, which is not good. So, obviously you never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Anyone who's watched me for any length of time should already know this mantra. 
but once I've got the pigment onto the brush I shall be wetting it with some of this this is just a makeup obsession fix fit fit fix whatever extra hole makeup fixing spray um, first time I use a shimmer I don't use glitter glue with it unless it's obviously like a topper pigment or a glitter you know, a loose glitter then I will um, and I don't do a cut crease I want to see how much depth of opacity each pigment has so you can use any liquid to wet the brush you can use a moisturizing spray like MAC or Mario Badescu you can use um, setting spray, finishing spray, priming spray you can even just save an empty bottle and put fresh water in it each time you do makeup right so I'm going to go into uh, I think Lapis Luxury first which is that blue because that blue has been calling me ever since I saw the palette okay it picks up nice and easily on the brush I always wet a pigment regardless of what it is because it just helps to minimise fallout right the ferrule is now wet so I tuck it into my knuckles and spin because the last thing you want is moisture getting down and loosening the glue that holds the bristles so you won't have a brush You'll have a stick. And the reason I like this little one is because it does get right down into that inner corner. Okay. That is very pretty indeed. Hmm. Just dry the brush off because you never ever use even a slightly damp brush on a pressed pigment. Always dry it because you will end up screwing up your pigment basically right as I said I do have to hold this lid out but you will notice I only pull it out far enough to straighten the creasing as I can get it really blended in and gently let go and pop it back so I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll and I'm not just letting, letting it go and letting it spring back so that will do as little additional damage as possible right now I'm going to get the slightly wider brush and I can't decide whether to go for the purple or the red I think I'll do the purple, which is Synthetica. I don't know whether it's because the bristles on this brush are slightly firmer, 
that this is actually chewing the pigment up a little bit more. I don't know if the pigment is softer. And then I'm going to apply this. Like so. Use just the tip to blend it into the mat on the edge there and then just lightly drag across where the blue ends and the purple starts to get a nice blend between the two. Dry off the brush. again for the other eye. This is the only problem with me being so up close. When I look down like this to clean a brush, change a brush, add more pigment etc. You do end up getting a lovely shot of my widow's peak. But in terms of being able to see what I'm doing on even a small screen, for me it's worth the trade off. I used to hate watching tutorials where they'd say, right, well, I'll zoom in and they've still got the head and shoulders in frame. And you're like, um, can I just see your eyes, please? Don't need to see your designer frock or your poncy expensive background with all your Alex drawers. You can see the second half of the lid because there isn't that deep creasing. I've just dealt with it in exactly the same way I did this side. Okay. Quite like that. And that was my front door. But it's perfect timing because I'm about to stop anyway and put some foundation on. So I'll see you in a minute. I am back. Right, okay, I did my soap brows thing as usual and I used Orion, the deepest of the matte purples, to sweep through my brows. Right, now to do the underside flat top brush and I'm going to go into Orion, which is that deepest purple again. And I'm just going to run that along the lower lash line. I know my friend Will loves this point of the film. Hi Will. How are you doing? I feel like going grungy with it today because the weather's so bloody awful. I don't know why I do that. If it's a really overcast day, I tend to go for matching stormy makeup, I suppose. Um, guess it makes sense. I'm going to go into Eclipse, which is the mid-toned one. So not the lightest pink one. I'm going to use that. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's basically flat topped but chunky. A bit like me really. So it's perfect for smushing out under the lower lash line. But you can use any dense blender brush to do this with. 
this just happens to be my go-to. It's going to be really nice and smoky today. If I had anywhere to go, I'd stick a pair of lashes on. But... Lashes are expensive, so I don't see the point in wasting time putting them on if you're not actually going to go anywhere in them, you know. I don't know that sounds silly, but it's just... Right, this is a lip brush that I bought from eBay years ago. And I'm going to go into... I can bloody read it. Neptune. Which is the one in the centre. I'm going to pop that on the inner corner. And bring it along. And just blend it in with that smoky under eye. You don't have to, you can just leave it like that, but I like to bring mine along and blend it in. I just think it finishes the eye look off nicely. And I'm going to go into the final shade that I've not used yet, this one, which is Milky Way. Okay. And I'm going to pop this. Just up under the tail of my brow, because this is slightly more white based. So this is like white based with a pinky lilac shift to it. Whereas this one is more of a, a lilac base. I don't know if you can, can you see that? This is the one that I've put on under my brow. You can see it's white with a shift, whereas this one has a lilac base to it that I used on the inner corner. Maybe if I swatch it on the back of my hand it will show better. Yeah. So you can see there, this is the one that I used on the inner corner. This is the one that I used under my brow. I might use the one that I used under my brow for my face highlight actually. I'm sure I've got a small enough brush I can use. Yes, I have my Chic Pro highlighter brush from Royal and Lanyacle. That should fit into that little. Perfect. Could have been made for it. Right. I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to chuck some of that on my cheekbones. Yes, I am shiny because I used my Decipher uh, Natural Finish Foundation. Um, and I set it with the Laura Mercier Translucent Glow Powder. Because I wanted to, basically. Simple as. So I shall chuck some of this on my face as a highlight. Pop some mascara on, choose a lippy and do something with the hair. I'll be back with my finished look and my thoughts on the Pat McGrath. See you instantly. I am back. Okay. I used my... Bad Girl Bang Mascara just to prove I have got it because a lot of people thought I didn't have it <laughs> um, I did use the colour from the palette on my cheeks and the lippy is a new one it's from Uoma Beauty it says down the side a badass does not talk about being a badass It all 
also it says badass on there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And the shade just happens to be my name. Alright, I know I prefer Angie, but technically I was christened Angela. So, had to get that one when I saw. I have been watching Beauty Bay for bloody months. They keep putting random ones on sale, and the Angela one never, ever got discounted. It got discounted, I went straight on and bought it, because as well as being my name, it's actually pretty much the perfect brown nude for me. Marvellous. Bloody marvellous. So, um, I finished another setting spray, my Gerard Schlail Day. This was the mint choc chip one from the Rich Lux collab. But as you can see, I've got another box up there that's completely full that I haven't started yet. Um, but I've still got the mini mint choc chip and I think I've still got some of the... Yeah, I've still got about half the uh, orange creamsicle left. So... Oh! Balls! I nearly said something a lot ruder then. I'll pick those up off the floor. So, what do I think of the two palettes that I use? I'm going to put this in the bin now, I've shown you. I don't collect all my empties to show you all in one go, it's ridiculous. Okay, so, the Ofra one. I have actually used every single shade today. Um, they've actually blended really nicely. Uh, even though on camera it did look a bit patchy, in real life it didn't. I really like this. When we can ever get to the stage that we can travel again, this will be great because there's two shades in there that I could get away with for highlighter as well. So it would save packing a separate highlighter and it's small, so it's not going to take up a lot of space in your luggage. has its own mirror. Great definitely worth grabbing. Um, I got mine on Depop actually. So I did not pay anything like retail value for it. But I really really like that. So, Pat McGrath. I used the blue and the purple today. Um, I like them. They went on very smoothly, they blended very well together. Negligible fallout once, you know, obviously I sprayed the brush anyway, but you can still get fallout, but negligible fallout from it. Good sparkle, good opacity. But is it any better than any of my other shimmer shades that I've got, especially those from Indie Brands. I don't think it is. And seeing as how everyone raves about her shimmer formula more than her mattes, still want the Divine Rose 1 and 2 but it's not a longing for it's a I really like the look of that palette you know if if it comes up on Depop at a sensible price then I may pick one up but I'm not paying full price for it I really don't think it's worth it
so that's it um, if you want a more regular 4F babies please check you're still subscribed YouTube are unsubscribing you but they are leaving my films in your recommended list so it's not obvious that you've been unsubbed um, with mine they seem to have stopped sending emails at the moment and when they did that all of my notifications that I had set were knocked back from all to personalised. Now we have no idea when, if they're ever going to start sending emails again but when they do you're going to want your notifications on all so it's worth double checking that not just for me but for every channel that you follow. Um, if you're new here and you've tripped over me completely by accident Hi, hello, welcome, hope you enjoyed it here um, This is pretty much what you get from me You get me blethering on about all sorts of everything and nothing much at all But I'm told that I have a very soothing voice um, And that my tricks and tips have helped a lot of people improve their makeup application skills. So, I've even had a lot of people say they feel more confident using colour since watching me, which is awesome to know. So it'd be lovely if you too would like to join the 4F family. It is super, super easy to do. All you have to do is hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that at some time soon the YouTube will start sending them again. Until they do, I have a huge back side. Yes, but I also have a huge back catalogue of films that you can watch. I've got product reviews and makeup tutorials like this one. I've got foundation reviews, collabs, challenges, tags. I even read in my favourite poem in one of them. So, if that sounds like the kind of thing that you might be interested in, you know, and you've got some time to kill, you want some me time. As I have said now for what seems like forever, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, and indulge, my darlings. What better way to waste a couple of hours than watching me apply coloured pigments to my face and blether, basically. <laughs> Told I have a very soothing voice though. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is your stay fabulous. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.